UNCP sets its sights on a new grad school. And a local benefactor raises the stakes for a timely fundraiser. These stories and more on Carolina News Today. Senator Danny Britt introduced a bill that asked for more than $2 million towards the construction of a school of optometry at UNCP. North Carolina doesn't have any optometry schools in the state, and the closest one is at the University of Alabama. Senator Britt says this bill will help lay the groundwork for the future and help push the idea. This isn't the first attempt to bring an optometry school to Pembroke. In 1998 and 2006, State Senator David Weinstein from Lumberton tried, but faced numerous barriers at the state level to get it off the ground. The UNCP Mass Communication Department had their inaugural media career day this week. Potential employers came to the Entrepreneurship Incubator to meet juniors and seniors. Broadcasters, print media, and public relations professionals talk to students and in about internships and job openings. Some students got advice on their resumes. Students enjoyed a buffet lunch and the Mass Comm Department says the event was a success. The Career Center had its own event on campus Wednesday also. The Pembroke Area Chamber of Commerce, the University, and other organizations are teaming up to host the 6th annual Cruisin' Pembroke Street Festival. The event was first started as a way to give back locally. It has turned into an attraction for people to enjoy food vendors, entertainment, and art. The street festival also created a fund for sponsoring other community-wide events. This year, they'll hold the second annual soup cook-off along with the Junior Chef competition. The festival will be held on Saturday, March 25th from 11 a.m. until 5 p.m. Greek Week is coming up, and in preparation, fraternities and sororities got together for the Big Greek Reveal. This is an event where the Greeks go on a scavenger hunt to find out what teams they will be on for Greek Week. It's a high-intensity scavenger hunt in which many members run to specific locations to be the first to learn their team assignments. This event is special because it is the first time all the organizations will be together and begin all that they will need to do for Greek Week. During Greek Week, all the sororities and fraternities are engaged in competitions and dressed in themes every day. This year's theme is Greeks Don't Stop Rocking. The festivities will be held April 3rd through the 7th. The first Brave Nation powwow and gathering was held on March 18th in the Jones Athletic Center. It was a celebration of the history and culture of America's indigenous peoples. There were a variety of food vendors and numerous contests, including a drum contest for men and women with prize money at stake. The other competition was a traditional Native American dance contest for different age groups and genders. The university hosted a social for alumni. During the powwow, the Lumbee, the Lumbee tribe donated a tribal flag to the university, which was accepted by Chancellor Cummings. The school hopes to make it an annual event to replace the powwows previously held by student clubs. UNCP launched its third annual Day of Giving, called We Are UNCP. Employees and community supporters gathered inside the UC to kick off the event. The school promoted the event on every social media platform. The goal of the campaign was to gain 400 new donors in a 24-hour period. They surpassed their goal and attracted more than 487 donors. Former Congressman Mike McIntyre had pledged $30,000 to the school if they got at least 400 donors. The event was held in March to commemorate the university's anniversary. A local play of cultural significance is returning this summer after a 10-year hiatus. Strike at the Wind is a drama that tells the story of the Lowry War in 1865. The play originally ran from 1976 until 2007 at the Amphitheater at the Lumbee Tribal Cultural Center. This new summer performances will be directed by UNCP theater professor Jonathan Drehos. Drehos is excited about this kind of community outreach. He says he's researching the play's history and importance to the community. 
Auditions will be held Saturday and Sunday at the Pembroke Boys and Girls Club for a variety of ages from 10 a.m. until 6 p.m. SGA Art Night this month celebrated women's history. Students and employees came out to present their work or to enjoy work of their peers. Art students displayed visual arts produced in a variety of media. Music professor Gerana, Joanna Hersey led a brass ensemble in performing the work of female composers. Original poetry was read by English professor Hannah Baggett. Organizers said it was a great turnout for their monthly event. The North Carolina Department of Transportation tells us about their new option to help passengers reach their final destination with a new transit pass. And they continue to make progress reopening roads after Hurricane Matthew. Here's NCDOT now. Welcome to this week's edition of NCDOT Now. I'm Robert Broom. NC by Train has a new option to help passengers reach their final destination after departing the train along the Raleigh to Charlotte Rail Corridor. Beginning March 18th, rail passengers can use a transit pass to travel from the train station to their local destinations. The transit pass will be available through a partnership between NCDOT's rail division and 11 transit systems to help make it easier and more convenient to travel by train in North Carolina. The Transit Pass is available to travelers on the Piedmont and Carolinian trains at no additional charge. Just request the pass from a conductor while on board the train and present it before boarding a partner bus. The pass is valid for one ride and one transfer during the travel day. When you're making your decision about taking the train versus taking your own car, often one of the questions you ask is who's going to meet me at the station? Uh, what if my train isn't exactly on time? Uh, what if, do I burden somebody else to come and get me and having this by train pass allows you to really be independent on your own uh, to use the public transportation systems in the cities and go to your destination. For more information about the transit pass visit ncbytrain.org. We're also pleased to report that NCDOT has made tremendous progress in meeting Secretary Jim Trogdon's charge to reduce the number of road closures due to damage from Hurricane Matthew. As of this week, only 19 roads remain closed. More than 600 roads were closed in central and eastern North Carolina at the height of the storm. The remaining road closures require the replacement of damaged bridges or the installation of large pipes that must be specially ordered. The department is working to reopen these roads as quickly as possible. That's all for this week's edition of NCDOT Now. As always, you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. That's at NCDOT. And from all of us at the North Carolina Department of Transportation, safe travels. Looking to do something fun, but don't think there's anything cool on campus? Get ready for this week at UNCP. There's a lot going on, on campus this week, including a series of free concerts and recitals from the Department of Music. Yes, free. As in no charge, as in you get something for nothing. Good day, sir. Here's what's on tap this week. On Friday and Saturday, UNCP hosts the first ever college powwow with our university is proud Native American lineage. The powwow will be something special. Head over to the Jones Health and PE building on Friday from 3 until 10 and Saturday 8 in the morning until 10 at night. The Percussion Ensemble Festival is on Saturday from 9 in the morning until 7 at night in Moore Hall. The music department has a great percussion ensemble and this event is always a treat. The all day event is free so check it out before or after visiting the powwow. On Monday night the GPAC Broadway and Moore series welcomes the Russian National Ballet performing Swan Lake. I'm not gonna lie, no one does ballet better than the Russians and Swan Lake is an all time classic. Student tickets are a bargain, so there's no reason why you shouldn't head over to GPAC at 7.30. You'll be dazzled, you'll be amazed, and you'll be thanking me later. Just go. This one's a little weird, but the CIA is having an information session on Tuesday between 12.30 and 2.30 at the UC. If you're interested in a career as a spy, this may be your chance to show the CIA that you're the next James Bond. Finally, the university is hosting the Spring Business Etiquette Dinner on Thursday at 5 p.m. If you're getting ready to graduate, but you think you need to polish your people skills so you can navigate the business world, this is your chance to get some pointers. Contact amber.lennon at uncp.edu for a reservation and more information. And that's what's going on this week at UNCP. 
If you're looking for more events, go to calendar.uncp.edu and check out all the activities happening on campus. Until next time, I'm Ethan Rothstein, and this is This Week at UNCP. Get funky, my friends. UNCP track and field continues to rack up new records. And brave softball extends a painful losing streak. Deja Dykes up next with sports. The first two rounds of the NCAA tournament are over, but not without ending in surprises and upsets. Last week, people were asked which teams they picked to reach the Final Four and which two teams they thought would make it to the championship. After giving it uh, well, a lot of consideration, my Final Four is Kansas, Villanova, Arizona, and UCLA. I got UCLA, uh, UNC, Gonzaga, and... Oh man, I forgot the team. Uh, I forgot my last team. Kentucky, Carolina, Arizona, and I forgot my last person. Carolina, Duke, uh, Arizona, and Louisville. Uh, I got Duke, Kansas, Kentucky, and Arizona. That's my final four. Duke and Kentucky, and I got Duke winning 81 to 76. Gonzaga and Kentucky. Duke and UNC. I, I can't remember how the bracket was, but I know I had uh, UNC winning it all. I think Kansas is going to beat Villanova in the, in the championship. Uh, Carolina's winning the whole thing. I guess with Villanova and Duke losing early on, a lot of people won't have winning brackets. But the NCAA tournament continues this weekend with the Sweet 16 and Elite 8 portion of the tournament. Three number one seeds still remain while number 11 seed Xavier hopes to continue their tournament quest. The UNCP track and field teams competed in the Trojan Challenge last weekend, earning 47 new personal best times or marks at the event. Freshman Devontae Norman and LaShawn Tate led the way for the black and gold to take top honors in a pair of jumping events. Silas Kipkoek led a group of Braves to the finish line in the 10,000 meter run, while Leah Tardinasio came out on top in the 5,000 meter run. Following the Trojan Challenge, the Pembroke's men's track and field team checked into the top spot in the first installment of the Southeast Region Outdoor Track and Field Poll. The women's team checked in at, at the number four spot in the listing. For the men, Silas Kipkoek sits atop the region's mark in the 10-meter run, while Evan Guin leads in the hammer throw. For the women, Deanna Cube holds the region's top mark in the high jump. The Braves will travel to Daytona, Florida this weekend when they compete in the Florida Division II Challenge. The UNTP baseball team hit a pair of home runs in a five-run fifth inning to cruise past Wingate Tuesday afternoon. The Braves scored first on the board and eventually racked up a 6 to nothing lead. In the top of the eighth, the Bulldogs cut that deficit in half, making the score 6-3. But the Black and Gold added an insurance run to their score to take the 7-3 victory. The Braves will continue their eight-game homestand this weekend when they take on the top-ranked and PBC-leading North Georgia. In softball, the Lady Braves extended their losing streak to 14 in a sweep against Young Harris. Last weekend, Piver committed a total of eight errors in the doubleheader to remain scoreless in both matchups. UNCP left 10 runners on in Game 1, including three in the last at-bat, but a strikeout and flyout stopped the Lady Braves from tying the game. The Black and Gold attempted to fight back in the second game, but seven runs on five hits in the fifth inning secured the 8-0 victory for the Pirates. The Braves will hit the road Saturday when they play top-seeded Armstrong State. In golf, the Lady Braves will be hosting the Sunoco Campbell Oil Classic next weekend. The tournament will be at the River Landing Golf Club in Wallace, North Carolina. Eight teams from five states will compete, including Division I Bucknell University. The Pembroke team will be competing with all members of the team instead of the usual top five players. With this, while this is the first Sunoco Campbell Oil Classic on the women's side, the men's team hosted a spring collegiate tournament for 16 years. That makes this the 17th season the Braves have hosted the event with the support of Matt Campbell. And this is the last event for the Braves before conference play starts. And that's it for me. Back to the studio. 
Thanks, Deja. Looks like we're going to have great weather for all these sports this weekend. I know. We're looking at temperatures into the 70s for more than a few days. All right. Well, that's all we've got time for. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.